with that. Uh, uh, I uh, was commenting earlier on the, uh, uh, the mess that this uh, budget has found itself in and uh, the way that the government has uh, been impacted on as a result. And in all the trouble that they experienced in recent times, Member for Cunningham, you may uh, recall that the coalition said we need to change our ways, we need to bring the public with us more. Which we need to. Uh, oh, well, they've been doing it quite a lot now. Uh, uh, I need to have a clicker to actually count the number of times they've done it. Uh, but they, um, uh, they said we need to bring the public with us, uh, we need to explain our reforms better, and we need to be more bipartisan. And this is what I was hearing. I mean, hearing them say bipartisan is, is truly a revelation. Uh, and uh, makes one uh, stop mid-thought. Uh, and then you uh, actually uh, match the, the uh, word against deed, and speaker after speaker on their side, and, and I actually remember an extraordinary contribution by the member for Banks, who spent his entire speech talking about what happened in the past, attacking Labor. These were the people that said they would look to the future, that they'd have argument to sustain the reform process, that they would want to be bipartisan, but they dedicate uh, in given the inability to sell this budget, they dedicate their time to continually attacking Labor, some way to get bipartisanship. And so uh, uh, when you then uh, go further and when you press them on this, uh, the uh, response that we're getting more and more these days from those opposite is, what's your plan? What's your plan? Now, this government that has found itself as a result of its first budget in such a mess has been breaking records. First record is, that they have the worst level of support of a first-term government that's been experienced in modern history. Record number one. Record number two is that it's one of the fastest times in which there has been an attempt to get rid of a prime minister. That's record number two. But record number three that they're attempting to break is to get an opposition before we even get to the halfway point to actually hand over policy. Now, this, when the coalition was in opposition, they had the answers for everything. For everything, they had the answers that they would have the policies. They actually, as I said earlier, they broke promises in opposition. They made promises in opposition and broke them in opposition before they even got to government. They promised a surplus. They then broke that promise and said they couldn't do it. And then they've gotten into government and said we can wait for ages. But they want us to actually come up with the ideas to get them out of their mess. They create the quicksand, they start sinking in it, and they want us to throw them the rope through the ideas that they expect us to develop. Well, I tell you what, I don't think it is time, it is not right, it is time for those opposite to be able to find the way. I mean, they told us before they knew all the answers, they said they had the policies there. It is up to them, not the opposition, to actually frame a budget, they're in government, frame a budget fairly. Make sure that you do the things that are required as we knew. Because when we said we had a revenue problem, they, those officers said, no, no, this is a revenue forecasting problem. And now all of a sudden the Treasurer is pointing to the fact that, oh, well, commodity prices are a problem and we've got terms of trade that are a problem. I mean, all these things that we knew, these were not forecasting problems, this was reality. This was not forecast, this was actually the present. And those opposite, uh, continued uh, to, uh, to say that these weren't problems back then when they were in opposition, that they'd fix them up, there'd be a surge of confidence when they got elected, that everything would sort itself out. Now they're in a morass and they want us to, to actually fix that up for them by giving them ideas. This is not about them fixing ideas. This is not a genuine request to be bipartisan. All they want, when you look at their form, all they want to do is be able to attack. All they want to be able to do is criticise. What they want out of the opposition is a platform to continue to attack Labor. They don't have a platform for the future or policies that can actually get them out of their own mess. What they're inviting us to do is to step forward, put forward ideas so they can divert attention from their own problems by spending all the time in the parliament attacking Labor. This is not good government. Good government should be that you have the policies and the wherewithal to actually address what the nation needs to have fixed. And so I say the opposition should not be putting any policy forward. We'll do it at the time that's right, and we'll do it better than those opposite who failed to deliver even on key economic policy until the final week of the election campaign, and who have now turned their back on PFO, who have now turned their back on the Charter of Budget Honesty. We are not here to aid and abet their mission to break their promises. We will hold them to account and we will make sure that they do what they said they would and we're not going to engage in the political point scoring that they seem obsessed with. Order. Question is at the